Welcome to the Flipped Phonology course again. In the previous video, we talked about phonological processes. We've seen so many examples related to assimilatory processes like palatalization, like labialization, like divorcing, like nasalization. Today, we're going to cover more other phonological processes. But before that, I would like you to look at this example of a part of speech of Mr. The President Trump. Each of you embodies the warrior creed, your devotion, prowess. Jerusalem is not just the heart of three great religions on the southern half of this peninsula. Replace chasms of distrust and the internet. Then you will gain momentum. Terminating the diversity, lottery, diversity, and diversity. Rich traditions. And I have to say, really talk about Cassandra Purlea. And God bless the United States. In fact, what happened to President Trump in this video is this. When we write words, normally we leave some spaces between them in order to distinguish them in sentences or phrases. But when we speak normally, we don't make any pauses to distinguish between one word and the other. In rapid flow, what happens is that sounds, they change entirely according to context. So whenever there is a context in which there are similarities of sounds, mistakes will take place. And that's exactly what happened here. We already defined assimilatory processes as those processes that actually affect sounds. It's when one sound is trying to look similar to the another sound. It's when one sound is taking the features from the neighboring sound here. But there is another process which is totally the opposite. This is exactly what we call dissimulation. Dissimulation is the opposite of assimilation. What does it mean? Look at this example. The sixth sheep is sick. Let's try to say this sentence in a rapid way and many times. The sixth sheikh sixth ship is sick. The sixth sheikh sixth ship is sick. It's actually too difficult. Why? Because we have in this sentence we have many sounds that are actually similar. Like what? Like the sound s, like the sound sh. These are fricative. So these fricative similarity affect our pronunciation. So what happens? Mistakes, changes will take place. And this is exactly what happens to Mr. The President Trump. The construction of words is made by bringing together sounds. They can be actually consonants or vowels. But many languages or languages in general are different. Some languages, they actually accept the construction of words made by only a sequence of vowels. Other languages, they do not accept words made up of just actually a sequence of vowels. Other languages, they actually can accept a cluster of consonants, but others do not. They need to break that cluster by actually a vowel that should be there between those consonants. Let's take the example of these three words here taken from these three languages, the Japanese language, the Hawaiian language, and the Swahili language. In the first Japanese word, we have the word Aoi, which means blue. The second one is actually Iwa, which means to purify. The third one is actually Aiya, which means in Hawaiian, to rise up. These three words are actually very difficult for us to pronounce. Why? Because the construction of these words are made of just a sequence of vowels. Is this acceptable in other languages? Now, this is exactly what happened when speakers from other actually languages, when they want to pronounce these words, they find it very difficult. Why? Because in the phonological system of their mother tongues, they do not accept words made up just of sequence of vowels. This is exactly what we call in phonology hiatus. The word is hiatus. Hiatus is what? It refers to two vowel sounds occurring in adjacent syllables. Two syllables that are adjacent, and the first one and the second one are both of them made of 
just one vowel. So when they are together, actually, those actually vowels, they juxtapose. So what's the, and we, there is no intervening consonant. So what will happen? Hiatus is not acceptable in many languages. So what they do to avoid hiatus is to use what we call syllable structure processes. So what are syllable structure processes? Syllable structure processes refer to those processes that affect distribution of consonants and vowels within words. And this is for one purpose, which is to avoid hiatus, which actually the fact that many languages do not accept this phonological phenomenon, hiatus. Two adjacent syllables made up of only vowels. So consonants of words may be deleted or inserted. Two segments may coalesce into a single segment. A segment may change major class features, such as a vowel becoming a glide. Two segments may interchange. Any of these processes called cause an alternation in the original syllable structure. So these are the syllable structure processes. We have first deletion, or what we call elision. We have also insertion, or what we call epenthesis. We have the, another assimilatory process, which is coalescence, and we have also metathesis. It's when two sounds interchange their possessions. So let's see them all together. The first syllable structure process is what we call elision or deletion. It is elision because it comes from the verb to elide. It is deletion because it also it comes from the verb to delete. So what is elision? Elision is when a sound which is present in the underlying phonemic form is not expressed at all in the surface phonetic form. It's actually when you delete a sound that actually exists in the phonetic form, but in the pronunciation, it's not there. It's not actually pronounced. Elision, it's a pronunciation or it's a phonological process which actually takes place when you delete a sound that exists in your phonetic representation but does not exist in your actual pronunciation or phonetic representation. Let's see some examples. Let's start with the first example in English. In English, the G sound is actually pronounced in many examples, like the example of the word signature, like in the example of the word designation, like in the example of the word paradigmatic, like in the example of the word resignation. But what about when the g sound is actually deleted or not pronounced? Now, if we take signature and we try to derive the verb from the, this noun here, the verb is to sign. Designation, try to derive again here the noun or the verb. So we have design or to design. Paradigmatic, we have paradigm. Resignation, we have resign. Now, the difference between the two words here, sign and signature, in sign there is no g sound, while in, in signature we have the g sound. In design, we have the we we deleted again the g sound. Also, the paradigm we deleted the g sound and the resign also the g is deleted. Now it is deleted. In these words but it is not actually deleted in signature designation paradigmatic and resignation this is an example of G so we understand phonological or as a phonological process or native speakers they have this as an unconscious phonological knowledge the G sound is deleted here whenever it occurs before a word final possession if we take any example, this is a phonological knowledge that all native speakers of English have. If we imagine we give a, a native speakers words in which they have G before a nasal in a word final, and we give them again G followed again by a nasal, but in not in a word final. And let's check how these native speakers will pronounce this g sound. Are they going to delete it? Yes or no? In fact, because this is an unconscious phonological knowledge that these native speakers have, they will not delete in certain context, 
but they will delete that in certain in other certain contexts. If we take this example of these strange words that are actually do not exist and imagine this conversation here, how would the native speaker of English pronounce this? So a native speaker will actually say he was a salignant man. The word salignant, which is actually not a real English word, native speakers will pronounce the g sound because it's actually in a context in which g is before a nasal but not in a final possession. But in the second word, why did he salign the word salign somebody? Native speakers will not say saligan or saligan, they will say salign. Why? Because the get sound exists in a phonological context, which is before a nasal in a word final possession. So automatically, this rings a bell in their phonological system or in their mind, which is like the words design, resign, paradigm. So they will not, they will delete that get sound. So this is an example of deletion. Let's take another example of deletion and also in English. The head sound is deleted whenever it is, it is found in an unstressed syllables. Let's take the example of this sentence here. He handed her his hat. He handed her his hat. Actually, in a fast speech, the head sound in the word her and also in the word his will be deleted because the vowels in the in those syllables are actually unstressed. So what will be the case? The pronunciation will be this way. It, not he handed her his hat, but actually we will say he handed her his hat. He handed her his hat. This is a deletion, an example of a deletion in English. Another example in English is exactly when we delete for cluster simplification. The case in which we have sequence of consonants or we call consonant cluster in one word and we delete one consonant in order to simplify the pronunciation. Take the example of grandparents, take the example of standpoint, take the example also of handbook. The pronunciation will not look handbook, grandparents, stand point. You can notice that in the word, for example, standpoint, we have a consonant cluster n, d, and b, standpoint. In the pronunciation here, it's not going to be the same. We are actually going to delete one consonant in order to simplify the, the cluster and also the pronunciation. So instead of saying standpoint and handbook and also grandparents, we're gonna say stand point. We're gonna say handbook. We're gonna say grandparents. And here, this is the deletion of exactly the sound d there in these cases in order to simplify the pronunciation. Let's take the example again of these words pumpkin or jumpsuit or dump track. These three words again, we have a consonant cluster. We have m b k in the first word, we have m in the second word and also we have in the third word. The pronunciation here will not be exactly the same. What we have here is or or but what we actually pronounce in the phonetic form is the following. We say pumpkin, not pump, pumpkin, jumpsuit, not jumpsuit, jumpsuit. And we say dumb track, not dumb track. These are actually real pronunciation of native speakers in certain contexts and specifically in fast speech. We've seen examples of constant elision when we delete a consonant. Now let's move to see some examples of vowel elision when we actually delete a vowel. In French, this is common. It's exactly when we delete the vowel e or a for the definite articles le and la. Le and la are two definite articles in French and when these two articles are actually added to a noun that actually starts with a vowel, the e or a in these two articles is deleted. Why? In order to avoid again what we call hiatus. The example of le or la 
plus the word ami, which means in English, friend. We don't say le ami or la ami, but what we say exactly is l'ami. And this is very common also in other examples in French like j'ai and like l'air. Now let's move to English. In English, there are some words that actually end with vowels. And when we want to change them to negative, we add a suffix, a morpheme. But when that morpheme is actually starting again by another vowel, we will have again hiatus. English does not again accept hiatus. So what will happen? We delete. Take these examples of word Mexico, or the word Morocco, or the word cello. These three words here, they all end with the vowel O. Now, what if we want to change them to negative? We can add the morpheme, which is the adjectivizer here, N. So, instead of saying, or what we say exactly is Moroccan for Morocco and Mexican for Mexico. But for the word cello, we will add the morpheme as a suffix, which is ist, which is actually, again, starting with another vowel, which is E. So, we say, cellist so these are examples morocco moroccan mexico mexican cello cellist what happened here there is a deletion of vowels o in order to follow or to avoid the phonological phenomenon which is exactly hiatus let's see another example in english another example of vowel elision and let's take example of when a vowel is deleted because it is weak because it is unstressed and because it is actually found in unstressed and between two syllables. Take the example of the word separate. Take the example of the word chocolate. These two words, for example, we have three syllables in each, but the middle one, we have a vowel that is actually unstressed. Now in fast speech, separate becomes separate in chocolate becomes chocolate. So in fast spe speech, we don't say separate, we say separate. In fast speech, we don't say chocolate, we say chocolate. And also other examples like family, family, like finally, family, like other examples like factory, not factory. Other examples like temperature, not temperature, temperature and many other examples. So in English, what we can see here is that English, when we have unstressed vowels between syllables, those unstressed vowels are actually deleted.